And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? Special thing to God. Right. Right? He did not even regard the importance of his birthright. He would sell his birthright, the heritage that God gave him, to be firstborn for food. He disrespected it. He disregarded it. It worked nothing to him. Let me get a plate of food for my birthright. Would you do that? If you know that your birthright is special to God? But right. this guy... I can't, you can't ask me that now because watch me, I already read the history, read the story and thing, and... So you would sell your birthright? Man. Nah, nah, brother, nah. <laughs> Nah, You're brother. Going off, brother. Yeah, he's a greedy man. You're going off, brother. He's a, he's a greedy man. Me do anything for cook food. Anything for nah, cook brother. food, man. You can't, nah, brother. You can't sell your birthright, man. I won't nah, know brother. Because I already know better. You know, you know I mean? better now, right? No, you know better. You know better. I was Esau. I'm just putting myself in this situation. Who knows that these days if I come in hungry and starve and then I'm about to die. Knowing, He's a greedy man. knowing and understand this, he knew. Everybody knew that. That's right. the culture. Right. In every culture, that is the, the thing. Right? Even if you're so called Chinese, being first born is special. Right. This is something special in every culture around the world, King. So it's not like he didn't know. Right? Yeah. But he disregarded his birthright. And he sold it for some food. But understand, black people know how to cook. So, hey, we, we can definitely uh, twist that for our advantage. Go ahead, King. Right. And Jacob <laughs> said, swear to me this day. And he swear unto him. And he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Right? Understand this. The second born knew how important that birthright was. And he took this opportunity to get it. Do you know what Jacob means, the word Jacob? It means surplanter, trickster, con man, right? So he saw this opportunity. <laughs> this nigga's hungry. <laughs> and I know how this nigga don't disregard, he disregard everything. He had no respect for nothing. I'm going to use this opportunity to get that birthright, right? So Esau is taking this thing lightly, but Jacob is taking this thing seriously. Jacob has respect for that birthright. He says, swear to me that you're going to sell me this birthright when I give you this food. Right? Read that again, King. And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swear unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. There you go. He swore, which he made a contract, out of your mouth into God's ear, <laughs> is what they say. So he swore to him, he made sure that contract was solid. He made him repeat it, yes I swear that I'm going to give you my birthright if you give me that plate of food. And the contract was binding, right? Then Jacob gave Esau bread and cottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink, and rose up, and went his way. Thus Esau despising his birthright. Oh, you con, 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 right? So this is, this is, again, like I said, a real important prophecy that came directly from God's mouth. Two nations in your womb, two manner of people, one nation stronger than the other. Bring it out. Let me ask you a question. Between the so-called white man and the so-called black man, who do you think is stronger? That's not even a question. <laughs> it's not even a question. It's not even something you even need to think about. Right? When it comes to everything in life, we are stronger than they are. Right? We can mention sport. We could mention um, anything you want to bring out. 
right? Inventions. The Bible says, say again? Inventions. Inventions. Real history is all right? Mostly the, black the, people invented everything. There's That's a name of a book that says black people invented everything. Right? Do you know what the white man has invented? Money. The patent office. Right? So even in slavery, while we are here in bondage, we invented so many things, but the white man took um, um, took claim of it because we were his slaves. Right. And they exploited exploited us and they're still exploiting us today. Because we are allowed to. Right? So, hey sis, how you doing? You ever think about it? You, you believe the Bible says? We're not in slavery. You're not talking right? to me? I apologize. So come, let's make friends now. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, so this is what the Bible says. Bring it out, King. Right? That, um, where was I going? I was going to go that. With the inventions, right? Um, Esau only invented the patent office, right? There's still a lot of people trying to gain the claim back for things that their forefathers invented in slavery, still in court, right? So the Bible says one nation is stronger than the other. We are that nation that is stronger than the other. Right. Prophecy-wise, they are supposed to be servants to us. Right. But now we are servants to them. How did that happen? Do you know how that happened? This guy, I want to ask you something. You say one nation stronger than the other, but why white man dominating this dude right now? That's the question on the table. Why is right. the so-called white man dominating everything? Right? Let's go into it. Right? So there was prophecies given to the nation of Israel. So we understand here that this person's name is Jacob, right? But without going into it, his name was changed from Jacob into e um, from J um, from Jacob into Israel, right? Do you know Moses, right? What did Moses do? Brought the children of Israel out of slavery, right? He was raised up purposely for that. The name Israel was given to Jacob because he wrestled with God and prevailed, right? And God says, your name is no longer going to be surplanted, trickster, con man, but your name is going to be Israel, which means you wrestled with God and you prevailed. Right. Right? This is how such we are such a nation Cut. that we can be stronger than the others. Right? We wrestled with God and we prevailed and when name were changed. Right? Bring it when up. Moses brought the slaves out of Egypt, it says he brought the children of Israel. Israel, or Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, had 12 children. Really 13. They had one girl. Right? The girl died. But 12 boys. Each one of those boys became a nation. Right? The, the 12 tribes of Israel. So familiar? Right? And this is who uh, Moses brought out of Israel. When he brought them out of Israel, I mean, so Shalaki, when he brought them out of Egypt, out of slavery, out of bondage, there was a covenant made with the children of Israel, with God. Right? Bring Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 1. These be the words which most spake unto all Israel on this side, Jordan, in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea, between Iran and Tuckville, and Lebanon, and Hazaroth, and Disahab. Right. So this is Moses speaking to all the children of Israel. Right? This is after he brings them out of slavery. And, and there's a covenant made with the children of Israel. Right, bring up Deuteronomy uh, 28, and, and we're going to start from verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, and thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, 
to observe to do all his commandments. So this is a covenant being made between the children of Israel, right? Moses being the spokesman and with God. Bring and it Moses up. is giving them instruction because he is the spokesman, right? And he's telling them, listen, if you shall listen carefully, pay attention, right? Let's read it again. Deuteronomy 28, more. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken. shall listen carefully and do and observe and perform all of these words that I'm telling you, right? Let's see what's going to happen. Which I commanded thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Right? So what we're supposed to do is to observe and do the commandments that God command us to do. Do you know how many commandments there are? Huh? You, you've been to a Christian church? You. Well, the church teaches you. Hey, King, how you doing, brother? Do you know how many commandments God gave us? No? Not offhand. You know it, but not offhand. Right? Twelve? Well, the church teaches that there are 10 commandments. You ever heard about 10 commandments? You ever saw that movie with Charlton Heston? Good, because it's all lies, right? The church teaches that there are 10 commandments. In the scriptures, there are 613 commandments. Right. Right? But we never learned that growing up in church, right? So God says if you perform, if you listen carefully and do, Right? All of these commandments that I'm giving you, that you will be above every nation that is on the earth. You're going to be special to me. Did you know that God put the nation of Israel above every other nation in the world? Did you ever hear about that? Okay, so let's bring it out. Verse 2. And all these blessings shall come. And all these blessings are blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, and thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Right? So God says, When you follow me, listen to my laws, my statutes, my commandments, and not just listen to it, but perform it and right. do it. Take it to heart. Follow it, keep it, that all these blessings are going to come upon you. Blessings is a good thing, you think? Yeah, I think so too. Go ahead, King. Okay. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Go ahead. So we're going to be blessed in the city, right? You live in Brooklyn, right? Jersey, are you blessed in Jersey? You're blessed, you sure? You own your own uh, apartment? You renting? Is that really blessed? Right. Who owns it? I'm still blessed. You're still blessed? Yeah, because I live a rent and I'm not blessed. I'm blessed. You, so you feel like you're blessed, right? <laughs> well, I'm blessed hey, for that's it. a good thing, man. I feel like I'm blessed. I'm, I'm blessed, blessed. You by... feel like you're blessed. You know you're blessed, right? You know you're blessed. You bring it out, man. Right? But this is what God says. If you follow my commandments, so let's see if these blessings line up with what you're living. Right? He says, if you do what I says, you're going to be blessed in the city and in the field. Right? That's what it says. So, you feel like you're blessed in the city. Right? Do you own any fields? You don't own any fields. Not in America. 
Trinidad. Do you own your own fields in Trinidad? I own acres of land in Trinidad. Acres of land the brother owned in Trinidad. All oh, free. Acres, acres of land. Acres of land. Acres and oh, acres. Crazy. Respect every time. Bring it out, King. Okay? Verse 4. Bless shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground. So blessed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground. You have children, right? And they're healthy. All praises, all praises. King, what's going on, brother? All praises. And the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy king, kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. You, you got flocks and cattle and thing, King? Hey, brethren. What's your name, King? Days. Days. Days? Days. And your name? James. James and Days. We're bringing it out for Days and James. Yeah, for James days. and Diz. For days and Days. Days. <laughs> yeah. What, what, you, you, you had now? Oh man. You dash you it? You know the Bible, King? Okay? You believe the Bible? He dash it. You, you, you don't know. You, you don't know what to believe, right? There's so much folly going on. Huh? You know there's a God. So you're not a fool, right? You know that there's a God. All praises. God. Right? So that's a good step. And I understand that believing is hard today, man. Because we see things that are wrong and we're told that it's right. You got kids? You got kids? Uh, I do, but it's like... You, don't, you got kids, but what do you mean, but? Uh, that's it. I, I said I, I do got kids, but I was like, you, I didn't hear you, Jay. You disagree with what I said? What, what did I say that you disagree with? So what well, you disagree with what I said that they make things that are wrong to be right? That's what you disagree with, kinda? Okay. Let me ask you a question. Wait. So you know Dwayne Wade? You know he has a twelve year old boy? Right? And you know they're about to cut off that twelve year old boy's penis to make that twelve year old boy a girl, and society says that's a good thing. So you disagree with that, or you agree with that? You agree with him cutting off his penis? So how you said it? That's what I said. But you said you disagree. With me. <laughs> you agree that a grown man with beard and mustache could put on a dress and says, "I identify as a female," and walk into a girl's bathroom? You agree with that, right? You think that's a good thing? No. No? That's two strikes, King. It looks like you might be agreeing with me. Okay, you agree that a grown man could go and do a gender reassignment surgery, cut off his penis, and says, today I'm a woman. And then I now have to come and be part of that and say, miss. Right. Instead of calling you... But brother, I don't know, man. You look like you might be on my side. You just disagreeing for disagreement's sake. You just don't want to agree with a black man. You want me to put on white face and say it? So, baby, it looks like we are in agreement that there's a lot of wickedness going on. Yeah, but we still, still like, we just want to have a person was brought up. It's still on the reason how many persons was brought up. I mean, I was brought up, I don't agree with certain shit. I mean, I mean certain shit I do. So you agree that because a man identifies as a woman, <laughs> he should be put into a woman's prison and get all of them females in that prison pregnant? So. <laughs> I don't know, you, you agree or you disagree yeah. with that? You agree because that person says, I'm now a woman, he should be put in a wrestling match with a female and beat her ass so bad that he breaks her bones up. You agree that a man 
who identifies as a woman should go bodybuilding or lifting weights with women because he now identifies as a woman. You and, agree with that, right? And beat the women. And beat the women. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring it out, King. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. That, you heard you, you hear what the Bible said, King? Just one second, just one second. Listen to what the Bible said. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Are you calling evil good? You know what woe is? So you want woe unto you? I can't argue with him, bro. I can't argue with him, bro. It's like, yeah, I gotta go, man. You gotta go? All praise. So don't leave me here, but they gonna kill my ass, bro. Don't leave me here, bro. They gonna kill my ass, bro. All praise. I'm here for you, King. We ain't here to kill you. I'm gonna see y'all, though. We're here for you, Dez. We're here for you, brother. Oh. All right, brother. All praises, man. Bring that out again, King. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light. Jake is something else. <laughs> that put it bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. This is a mixed up world, is what God is saying. Right. It's a topsy turvy world. The down is up and the up is down. Right. The in is out and the out is in. Good. Right? The wicked is cool, and the cool is wicked. It's wicked. God. Right? Hot is cold, <laughs> but cold is hot. God. Right? Bring it out, kid. This is the world that we live in. Bring it out. You got to do opposite. It's called opposite world. Right. Right? You say I love you, but you really mean I, I hate, hate you. Ass. God. You're my brother. It means you're my enemy. Right. This is the world that we live in. Where people call good evil and evil good. Where people call man woman and woman man. Good. This is what we live in. It's a backwards world. Backwards, good. Right? Upside you can't down. Make sense of this. It's upside down. Topsy turvy. Topsy turvy. Good. You could feel like a woman one day. Right. The next day you could feel like an animal. Right. You could feel like a cat. Dress bring, up like a cat. Bring it out, King. Because this is the world that we live in. This is what society is making laws and legal. Right? They frame in their wickedness with laws. Right. This is what society is doing. Bring it out. But guess what? The Most High is doing something as well. He's whipping their ass from the east, the west, the north, and the south. Bring it out. The Most High is giving this world drought. And floods at the same time. That's right. <laughs> that is funny as hell. He's That's gonna right. drown you. That's right. But it's gonna be a drought. Right. That's funny. That's funny. Bring it out, King. This is a catch twenty-two. He's gonna Bring give out, you a King. drought, but you're gonna get flooded. <laughs> this is how. This is what the Most High can do. He can make you be drought, you have no crops, your crops is dying with the heat. But on the other hand, send hailstorms and floods. Right. Only the Most High can do this. Nobody else can do that. Right? But this is what the world needs right now. Because the wickedness is increasing. Every day the wickedness increases. Right? There's thousands of cattle dying every day, right? And they're telling you right now that pretty soon the beef prices are going to be so expensive you're not going to be able to afford it. We see the increase of food every day going up. They're telling you in 2023 the shelves in the grocery stores are going to be there because the crops for corn and the, and um soybean is destroyed and there's so many products today that has corn and soybean in it Con. so guess what the prices in the grocery stores are going to escalate hey the scripture says suddenly 
shall the sown places be bare. Right. But not a fuzzy bear. <laughs> there ain't a fuzzy bear at all. Okay. It's going to be empty. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Okay. All praises, man. But this is what we're here to do, man. We're here to wake up our people. Bring it out, kid. Let them understand that they're living in wickedness. Teach. Help them to repent and come back to the Most High God. Because there's a requirement for God's people. Let Esau continue in his LGBT HIV right. community. That's you right. don't take part of that. That's right. That's for Esau and Moab. They H make great couples. HIV. <laughs> right? <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> right? Hey, hey, how you doing, friend? Yo, Esau. How do you think how do you think about boys being girls and girls becoming boys? People just do what they want? Do you agree with it? You agree with it? You have kids? No? You are you part of the LGBT community? You're a champion for it? Yeah? That's that's there we go. There we go. Be the champion for that community. That's your nature. Did you know that? That's your historic uh heritage. Out. You look like a Roman to me. So enjoy this community, man. You need better clothes? You see, you want to dress like a Roman so you don't wear underwear. <laughs> that's, that's who Esau is. Right. He, he don't like this jeans confinement. Right. I want to be able to rape quick. Right, right. You know, I want to get back to what it was in Rome so I can have a 12-year-old apprentice. Right. And do what I want to do with him or her. Well, it was never her. It was always a him. Right. But we're going to continue bringing out the word, man. I'm going to make room for the next powerful speaker to bring it out. All praises to the Most High. Death to Esau and this wicked nation. Death to all of these other wicked nations who had a part in our slavery. You went. Right? Shalom. Oh, Shalom. God, Kornesha. All right, so we're going to continue on the word. All right, the brother spoke one of the spirit of praise to the most high of Mashiach and Hamashiach. You can't get around truth, man. You know what I'm saying? You can't get around truth. Let's stop with that. Give me St. John 4, 24. You can't, you can't get around truth, man. Truth is truth. This world is upside down. Just like Isaiah said in the book of Isaiah 29, 16, he said this world, surely you're turning up things upside down. It's backwards. How could you champion a 12-year-old boy getting his rod cut off with the consent of his parents, and that's supposed to be a good thing. Man, come on, don't tell me this world is not finished, man. Come on. The most I'm going to do a number on this kingdom, man. Look, come on. You can't make it up. There you go. Like, just let me speak about it. The black man think he's a woman now. And this is normal. They're walking around like this. Oh, that's a man? That's a man. Yeah. Oh, shit. That's a dude, girl. Wow. That's a cake, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they think they men. You can't make this up. As we speak about it, it walks away. Wow. Right? Unfortunately, we didn't get it, but the spirit, you know what I'm saying? I well, thought it was a woman. Well, I, I thought it was a lie. <laughs> right, give me St. John 4, 24. Me. St. John 4, 4, verse 24. God is a spirit. What did the Lord say? God is a spirit. The Lord said he's a spirit. Come on. And they that worship him, and they that worship him, come on, must worship him in spirit. In spirit, come on. And in truth. The Lord said you're supposed to worship him in spirit and in truth. Now give me St. John 8.32. Alright? You're supposed to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Now link that up with St. John 8.32. Right? Don't worship the Lord in Satan and deception. You're supposed to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Done. But everything is so turned the hell upside down in this wicked damn kingdom. You feel you can do whatever, be whatever, act however. The Lord ain't with that, man. The Lord's not with that spirit, man. You better cut that out. Or you're going to get a rude awakening from the Heavenly Father. Read, okay? St. John's 8 and 32, the red letters. And he shall know the truth. I wish I said, you shall know the truth. Come on. And the truth shall make you free. Uh. Give, me, give me um Galatians. Uh, have I become your enemy? All right, you know what I want. 426 or 4. Wait, you know what I want. All right, read it again, okay? St. John's 8 32. 
And ye shall know the truth. What did the Lord say? And ye shall know the truth. And ye shall know the truth. Come on. And the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall make you free. So you got to deal with this truth. Give me a second unto 6 and 28. All right? We're going to speak on truth for a hot second. All right? Just to let me back on what the brother was bringing out through the spirit. You should live your life according to truth, man. Not according to lies and hypocrisy and evil. And a man becoming a damn woman. What kind of confusion, man? Lord ain't dealing with that. Con. But that's what this society is about, man. That's what you want. All right, you got to can't read that. The book of Galatians, chapter 4 and verse 16. Good. And Good. I therefore become your enemy. Am I therefore become your enemy? Come on. Because I tell you the truth. Because I speak the truth to you, man. Because we tell you the truth. Right? The Lord said what? Second Ezra 628. Second Ezra 628. Come on. As for faith, it shall flourish. Faith is going to flourish in these last days. Good. Corruption shall be overcome. Corruption, the corruption, the evil of this world is going to be overcome. Good. And the truth, and the truth, come on, which have been so long without fruit. Well, which have been so long without fruit, come on, shall be declared. Shall be declared, man. So everything going to be about truth in these last days. The world is still going to maintain in their lives. But everything is going to be about truth. God. When it comes to the most high, you have a shot. God. But the world going to see the truth. You shall know the truth, and it shall make you free. God. Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Holy Bible. God. And it said, the truth, which have been so long without fruit, is going to be declared. And we're going to continue to teach that truth, man, until the chariots fly. God. God. All right, until this kingdom burn and the chariots fly. God. We don't give a damn, man. That's how, and we're going to endure it to the end. And to that nuclear fire... Uh, destroys America and burn you up to a damn nuclear crisp and to them chariots coming to the sky. Oh. All right. Uh, so, uh, hold on. Yeah, so like the elder was saying, man, uh, this world, it became full of lies and um, we're here to bring the truth out. We ain't dealing with that folliness. Right. You understand? Bring it out. Right, like we said, man, uh, today, I mean, yesterday, this devil dropped dead. Warish, yep, I mean, um, uh, Gorbachev, Mikhail Gorbachev, 91 years old, dropped dead of an unknown illness. Was it monkey pox? Right? Was it COVID? What the hell? All right. Now they claim ended the he ended the Cold War and changed course of the world politics. No, he didn't, man. Right? Because the Cold War, the Cold War, still gonna get hot, even though it's been years. It's years later since the 80s, but the Cold War is still gonna get hot. Right. All right, give me that in Isaiah 9 and 5. All right, Isaiah 9 and 5, and you give me uh, Hebrews 12, 29. All right, the Cold War is still going to get hot. God. All right, yeah, Gorbachev dropped that. Mikhail Gorbachev. I remember him running around with Reagan talking about peace. God. With that damn birthmark scar, whatever the hell that was on his forehead. All right, I remember I used to work in a... Uh, the Mark of the Beast. I used to work in a toy factory. Yeah, yeah, the Mark of the Beast. Yeah, because the Christians say the mark is an X on your head. Uh, so <laughs> Gorbachev had the X on his head. All right, but uh, I used to work in a toy factory, and, and uh, one of the one of the one of the most popular Halloween masks, believe it or not, was Gorbachev. Because <laughs> right, he was president out there. It was in the eighties. I used to work in a factory in the eighties, and they used to have the Gorbachev mask with the scar on the head. And even a lot of jakes in the hood were black. <laughs> you know, so they said, like, oh, "That's that Russian president dude." Yeah. But the the, uh, the mask was popular within the summer. We used to ship out boxes during Halloween, like after the summer was over, like the end of August, after Labor Day, they get ready for Halloween. We would ship out tons and tons of order of the um, uh, Mick, the Gorbachev mask, man. Everybody want to run around with a damn scar on their forehead, right? Like Gorbachev. <laughs> but I remember back in the days, I remember all the peace talks that it was so called Ronald Reagan used to have. But what did the most high say? Isaiah 9 and 5. Hey, Isaiah 9 and 5. You give me uh, first Thessalonians 5 and 1. Hey, for every battle of the warrior. Lord said every battle of the warrior. Go ahead. Is with confused noise. With confused noise. Come on. And garments rolled in blood. Read again for the time. Every, for every battle of the warrior. Every battle of the warrior in ancient time. All right. Like a, like, a, like I, I used to always love to quote the movie 300. Right, we told he told uh, uh, Leonidas, our arrows will block out the sun. God. And Leonidas said, "But they will fight, fight the shade." God, God, God. In time, it was hand to hand combat. You had to learn. You had to know how to use a staff. You had to know how to use a sword. You had to know like the uh, the three hundred. 
They were such mighty warriors because they had to carry that heavy shield, man. That heavy, them heavy shields made out of brass and different metals, man. You know what I'm saying? So he said, look, your arrows will block out the sun, then we'll fight the shape. God. All right, so they fought with bow and arrow, with staff, staves, swords back then. So what did the Lord say to me one more time? Isaiah 9 and 5. Okay. Isaiah 9 and 5. For every battle of the warrior. Oh, I know I had you holding Hebrews too. Great. For every battle of the warrior. Every battle of the warrior. Come on. Is with confused doors. It, shut on. Now let me say. All right. Come on, shut up. All right. Go ahead. And garments rolled in blood. And garments rolled in blood. Then we'll fight in the shade. All right. Come on. But this shall be with burning. But this shall be with burning. Go ahead. And fuel of fire. And what? And fuel of fire. The Lord said this gonna be with burning and fuel of fire. So, uh, Gorbachev, you didn't stop the, you didn't, your Cold War is still gonna turn hot. All right, the Cold War is still gonna turn hot. Yeah. Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Holy Bible. Yeah. It says it's gonna be with burning and fuel of fire. Huh. Hebrews 12, 29. The book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 29. Yeah. For our God is a consuming fire. Is that power? Our God is a consuming fire. Listen, our power is a consuming fire. So that nuclear war is still coming, man. Uh, all of all of so-called peace talks. Give me First Thessalonians 5 and 1. And you give me um, Isaiah 48, 22. All right, all of so-called peace talks that you have with Ronald Reagan back in the 80s, it don't mean a damn thing, man. God. The Lord still, right, because you're dead now. How much how much peace you gonna talk about now that you're dead? There he is, there he is with Reagan. Uh, with the peace talks, that damn snake Reagan, that damn demon. All right, and uh, George George Bush Senior tried to off his ass, right, with his cousin. Uh, that that guy that shot Reagan was uh, the Bush's cousin. Hinkley. All right, yeah, Hinkley, John Hinkley. Yeah, that was the Bush's cousin. Yeah, they tried to say he was crazy and put him insane asylum. No, the CIA and George and the Bush family put his ass under mind control and said, cousin. You're gonna kill Reagan, <laughs> and I'm gonna be the next president of the United States. And he said, so, like the Manchurian candidate. Good. The man said, I must yes. kill, I must go <laughs> kill Ronald yeah. Reagan. Right. right, remember, uh, 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 Saturday Night Live made mockery of it. Right. They said, who shot Buckwheat? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, they, they, they act like Buckwheat was the president. And somebody tried to assassinate him. Hey, Mr. Wheat. Hey, Mr. Wheat. Hey, Mr. Wheat. Wheat. Hey, Mr. Wheat. Hey, Mr. Wheat. <laughs> 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 that was on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, no father, no father. Right. But when you read the, cause when you read um, the Immaculate Deception of Bush Bryant family revealed, it tell you it was Senior Bush that tried to off Reagan. John Hinckley was a distant cousin of the Bush family. And he put his ass under mind control, LSD, MK, Ultra, CIA mind control, and they had him trying to kill Reagan, man. And it said the bullet came like a half an inch from Reagan's heart, I believe it was. And they said a half an inch, it would have hit his heart. He would have been fooled. Uh, she, uh, Senior Bush would have been present years earlier. Right, like hey, Isaiah 48, 22. Come on. There is no peace. The Lord said there is no peace. Come on. Say it the Lord. Say it the Lord. Go ahead. Unto the wicked. So you can have all your peace talks and you ended the Cold War. There's no peace, Gorbachev. And now you're dead. How much peace you going to bring about now? You're dead. Okay. Right, and that Vladimir Putin, that heartliner, is in office. That's going to bring about that third world's war. Read what you got, King. First Thessalonians 5 and 1. You give me Matthew 10, 34. Read. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Right, so Paul said the exact time we don't really know. We can't say the nuclear war is going to happen November 27th, 2023. Right, we wish not only be uh, over a year from now, but we don't know. It's on the most high, the times and seasons, the most high. No, come on. Verse two: For yourselves know perfectly. Yourselves know perfectly. Come on. That the day of the Lord, the day of the return of Hamashiach Yahushai. Come on. So coming as a thief in the night. It comes like a thief in the night. Go ahead. For when they shall say peace and safety, they shall say peace and safety. Come on. Then sudden destruction. Then what? Sudden destruction. Then sudden destruction. Right, so you can say you ended the Cold War and, you know, your your, your peace talks with Ronald Reagan. All right, and, and, and uh, we ended tensions back then. What did the Lord say? Sudden destruction coming upon them. So when you say peace and safety, because now that's what he's known for. That's his legacy. His so-called legacy. His legacy is the peace talks that ended the Cold War. But you forgot Gorbachev. 
even though you so caught into the Cold War and now your body is dead and cold, but the Lord's still going to make it hot. Oh. All right, come on. As travel upon a woman. As travel upon a woman. Go ahead. With child. And then the pain's going to get worse as time go on. Come on. And they shall not escape. And you're not going to escape. So Gorbachev, you're dead and gone, and the world is not going to escape nuclear war. Because uh, when Go I think, uh, who took over? Yeltsin? Then Boris Yeltsin took over. And then Boris Yeltsin abruptly resigned, and then Madman Putin came in. Yeltsin was a drunk. Yeah, Yeltsin was a drunk, yeah. yeah. Right, Yeltsin, Yeltsin abruptly resigned. They probably told him, listen, man, if you don't go sit your ass down somewhere, your damn liver gonna cave in. Put that, right? put that, vodka. Put that vodka down, right? <laughs> put that vodka and that bread down. You know what I'm saying? Right? All you do is eat bread and drink vodka all day. Right, so they said, listen, man, go sit out, and then uh, Putin came in, Madman Putin. All right, so hopefully Putin be the last Russian president. Right, lead them into the Third World's War. All right, right read on. 10, Matthew 10 and 34. Think not that I come to send peace on earth. Right. Yahushua said, don't think that I come to send peace on earth. The Cold War will become hot. All right, you didn't end a damn thing. That's all. The Lord said that Habakkuk, though it tarry, wait for it, for it will surely come. It will not tarry. All right, come on. I come not to send peace. I came not to send peace. Come on. But a sword. But a what? But a sword. What does war represent? But a sword. Them nuclear bombs are considered what? But a sword. The Lord said they're, they're um, considered a sword. The Lord said I came to send a sword. That's all. Uh, uh, the uh, nuclear bomb is the modern day sword. The modern day gun. Right. right? The, the, the missile is like a giant bullet. That's all. But this bullet hits and destroys and burns up lands. I was in an Army Navy store the other day and... Uh, there's an Army Navy store on 42nd Street. The, the Edomite in there is a nutcase. The man, the man looked like he damn foot in them. World War I, World War II. Sure you know, the, man, the man, he's like, uh, remember the movie Falling Down? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember Michael yeah. Douglas yeah. with the Army Navy star yeah. and a guy? The dude yeah. reminded me of the guy in the Army Navy yeah. star yeah. in Falling Down. Yeah. He's a nutcase. The food. man got, the man got, the man, when you go in there, right behind the counter, the man got every size bullet. He got he got all kinds of different size bullets. He got like a regular nine millimeter gun bullet all the way up to like a bazooka, like damn near rocket bullet. Right. And but when you look at it, it just looked like a miniature missile. That's how a missile looks. A nuclear missile technically is nothing but a giant bullet. Gun, That's what it's gonna get shot into lands. Like you shoot somebody's body, it's just gonna actually be shot into lands. And it's gonna explode and destroy those lands. Like the bullet do, like you might have a hollow point. Right, that's all it is in Johnson Dam. All the bullets are different, about seven different size bullets. If you ever go in the Army Navy store on 42nd Street, look behind the counter up on the shelf. He got different size bullets. He got big ass bullets that fit big rifles and stuff and everything. Damn, it look like he got the little uh, the thing that that uh, uh, the, the rocket launcher. Look like he got that bullet, every damn thing. And it just looked like a miniature missile, man. That's all. The Lord said, "What, man?" The house shot said, "When they say peace and safety." Think not that I'll come to send peace on the earth, not send peace but a sword. And the ultimate sword is going to be that nuclear fight. So Gorbachev, you didn't end the cold act. Them nukes are going to be used, buddy boy. All right, by Shiva Mashiach, I'm shot. Read it again. Matthew 10 and 34. Think not that I come to send peace on earth. The Lord said, think not that I come to send peace on earth. Go ahead. I come not to send peace. I didn't come to send peace. Come on. But a sword. So you can act like you ended uh, a war and all that. It don't matter. The Lord will still stir it up. And even if you say, well, it's been years and he ended the Cold War and there's not been a nuclear war. Listen, the Lord can bring it out any time. Right? Right. The most I said, he come like a thief in the night. Right, we just read it. When you say peace and safety, then sudden destruction is coming on your behind. And you will not escape, thus uh, saith the Lord. Give uh, me um, uh, um, Sirach 6, I mean Sirach 7 and 17. And you get Judah 16, 17. All right, because the scriptures speak, all throughout the scriptures, they speak about that ultimate day of fire. And what is that ultimate day of fire? The nuclear destruction. Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Holy Bible. It's all throughout the Bible. And we're just bringing it out to show you just because you want to make this old Russian devil, you want to make his legacy that he ended the Cold War, all right, he stopped things. He, him and Ronald Reagan stopped nuclear tension between America and Russia. That don't mean it's still not going to happen. So that's why we bring it out because it's biblical prophecy. I got you now, Rick. Read. Chirac, chapter 7, 17. Come on. Humble thyself greatly. The Lord said you better humble yourself greatly. This is for you mainly 
you black, Latino, Native American, and Seminole Indian. Good. For the vengeance of the ungodly. The vengeance of the ungodly. Come on. Is fire. Is what? Is fire. That's what happened to the ungodly. Shalom, brother. All right, shalom, brother. All right. It's fire, fire, God, and worm, and what? And worm. And that fire and worms is going to be from the root of your bones. Right. Now, let's see what our sister, our warrior sister, Judith said. Read. Uh, what you want? 617? 1617. Oh, God. Judith, chapter 16, verse 17. All right, read that one more time. So, all right, chapter 7 and 17. Humble thyself greatly. You better humble yourself greatly. Come on. For the vengeance of the ungodly. The vengeance of the wicked that don't want to keep the commandments of the Most High. Come on. It's fire. It's what? It's fire. 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 Come on. And worms. The Lord said the vengeance is fire and worms. Oh. All right. So the hell with what Gorbachev got to talk about. He's dead and gone. And them nukes are being polished up. Ah, uh, shiver my shot. Give me shot. Me, Judah 16, 17. And you get Revelation 21 and 7. Read. Judas uh, chapter 16, verse 17. Come on. Woe to the nations that rise up against my kindred. Listen, sister Judas said, Woe, destruction to all the nations that rise up against my kindred. Come on. The Lord Almighty will take vengeance of them. The Lord said he's going to take vengeance of them. Come on. In the day of judgment. The day of judgment. Come on. And putting fire. And putting what? And putting fire. And putting fire. Come on. And worms. And worms. Go ahead. In their flesh. The Lord said he's going to put fire and worms in their flesh. So all the nations that came up against the children of Israel, our sister Judah prayed that the Most High bring nuclear fire on their flesh. By a shiver, my shiver. Read, King, Revelation 21 and 7. You give me a Zechariah 14 and 12. Read, Revelation 21 and 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, the Lord said, but the fearful, the fearful, come on, and the unbelieving, and the unbelieving, God, and the abominable, God, and the murderers, God, and whoremongers, God, and sorcerers, God, idolaters, God, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. You're going to have a part in the lake that burned with fire and brimstone, God, which is the second death, the second death, or the second major world destruction. The first one was the flood. The Lord said he's going to end the earth one time by water and a final time by fire. Hey! By Shema Mashiach, Yom Shem. My God. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 7. Yeah. But it's uh, 12. Uh, you want 12? Yeah. 14 and verse 12? Yeah. Come. Uh, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 12. Yeah. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away. Right, we, got, we got the image right there. It's right there. It said their flesh shall consume away. Go ahead. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Their flesh is going to consume away while they stand upon their feet. Go ahead. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. The Lord said their eyes going to consume away in their holes. Right? Go ahead. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And that's literal. Their literal bodies are going to be burned up. Physically and spiritually, that means what? The vision that you have for the future of this society is going to be de destroyed. All the lies that you told and the things you speak and the bold speech you make about this world, this society going to continue on, is all going to be destroyed. Fire is going to consume it. Good. Verse 13, and this shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord. That's it on that. Go ahead, now, I forgot you wanted to bring out something. Bring it out. Bedtime for Bonzo going to bed with a monkey. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
And, and now, right, right, you remember that, right? See? You remember that, yeah, you remember that, yeah. It's a car, remember that, yeah. Bet there, bedtime with Bonzo. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, and we know what he was doing with Bonzo. Right. We know what Ronald Reagan was doing. And that right. Bonzo represented, probably represented a little Jake. Right, right. That right. represented a little Jake since they called us monkeys and right. chimpanzees and orangutans. Right. Yeah, man, that monkey represents a little Jake. The hell with Ronald Reagan, man. What the hell with him? I wish that bullet would have hit his damn heart. Right. Inside John Hinckley. The hell with that devil, man. Inside joke about the racist, because Reagan stole that one. Right, 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 right. Like, he's the devil, man. And he was out there in Orange County and all that in Hollywood. Right. I mean, in California, racist as hell, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Racist as hell. How many of you remember what you were doing a year ago? Right. right. When they questioned him about the um, Oliver North, yeah, yeah. the Iran, <laughs> right. the Iran scam, right. I, I don't know. I, I mean, you remember what you were doing a year ago. Right. But these men, presidents are all liars, man. Yeah. Yeah. They're liars. Give me no wisdom of Solomon 6 and 1. These leaders, man, how with these leaders, man? I was bringing up earlier this summer um, in Chicago how the most I was dealing with these leaders. About how they, they assassinated the ex prime minister of Japan. They uh, raided the uh, president of Sri Lanka's house. Right? And uh, all that dirt came out of Biden and his sons. Smoking crack and stealing uh, stock tips and all this different thing. And embezzlement and all kinds of uh, crimes, man. And they still, what well, is man still running the so called free world? And all these crimes they brought out on Biden and his son um, earlier this summer. Right? Because what? The Lord dealing with these leaders of this world, man. Where's the Masada in 6 and 1? Read, King. Where's the Masada in 6 and 1? Yeah, therefore, O oh, ye kings, and understand, learn, ye that be judges of the ends of the earth. Come on. Give ear, ye that rule the people, and glory in the multitude of nations. For power is given you of the Lord. Right. Power is given you of the Lord. No nation. Give me, um, real quick, give me Proverbs 21 and 1. All right, give me Proverbs 21 and 1 real quick to prove that. Read. And sovereignty. And sovereignty. Come on. From the highest. From who? From the highest. From the highest, man. Sovereignty means just basically to be above the law. Yeah. All right, that's why a lot of these guys don't get prosecuted, man. They got all kinds of war crimes and stuff. In, stuff they took them out. They raided um, um, Trump's, uh, what's that, Mar-a-Lago? Yeah, yeah. Right? And all right, now why Trump not locked up? If the FBI had to raid, you know when the feds come for you, you fool. Right. If that's me and you, if the feds come, they got a case against you already. Right. The feds yeah. ain't really coming to play games with you. You know what I'm saying? If they come, they got a case against you. That's why they never came for us because although they always announce that they're watching us, they ain't got nothing on us. Mm -hmm. We're just teaching the gospel. We ain't doing a damn thing. But if the feds come to your door, more likely than not, unless they come to question you, if they come and arrange you and take you in, in the custody, they got something on you. They got a case. So why Trump not locked up? Because sovereignty, man, these guys are in power. And they're above the law to a degree. Oh. Right? But they're not above the law with the most high. Right. Right? They're above the law maybe on this land because the law just gave them that power for now. But they're not. Trump's supposed to be locked up just for just for telling the people show up on January 6th. It's going to be wild. Right. It's going to be wild. He should be locked up for that. Right. Incite the riot. He should be locked up for inciting the riot. And at least, at least the least kill, uh, 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 charge he should have is disorderly conduct. And incite the riot. Just for them words, man, show up, it's gonna be wild. Right? right? And they had a, um, I was watching YouTube today, and they had this Republican, this uh, Edomite woman, you know, all kinds of information just be coming out. Right. This Edomite woman came on and she said, Listen, I'm a Republican, but I am ashamed at my party on January 6th. She said, Basically, that was a coup. She said, January 6th was a coup. Donald Trump basically tried to overthrow the seat of authority and power that was that was wrong that was evil of them this white woman was great. she said i'm a republican but she said that was evil of them we had a, we had we had almost a civil war in our own country really you had a civil war in your own country because what happened is all the people on january 6th they was going against the capitol police and everything that was like a civil war they damn near took over the capitol right then people got killed and everything they hung nooses and every goddamn thing you're beating up cops, beating up cops and everything. Yeah, yeah. Nobody, nobody that Jake, man, that Jake, that Capitol Police Jake, that man yeah. said, "I never fit for my life." Right, right. All the time, you know, protecting the president, uh, protecting yeah. the nation's capital, you know, a terrorist threats, whatever. The man said, "I never felt so fearful of my own U.S. citizens." Right. 
See that? So when this thing go down, it's going to be bloody, man. And a lot, listen, what was out there, man? That was, some of them out there were military, they yeah. were law enforcement, mm -hmm. some of them were politicians. They had strategy, plan. They had strategy, yeah. plan, everything. They had military, they had all kinds of stuff, man. Mil military strategy set up, yeah. all that, man. Trump says, show up, it's going to be one. All right, so go ahead. Who shall try our works? And search out councils. The Lord said he's going to try to lead his works and search out their councils. Come on. Because being ministers of this kingdom, the Lord said, you are servants of his kingdom. He gave power to earth to you. Right? Come on. He have not judged the right. We have not judged the right being ministers of the Lord's kingdom. Go ahead. Nor kept the law, nor walked after the counsel of God. Come on. Horribly and speedily. The Lord said. Horribly and speedily. Horribly and speedily. Go ahead. Shall he come upon you? He, he's going to come upon you with a horrible and a speedy judgment. Come on. For a sharp judgment. A sharp judgment. Come on. Shall be to them that be in high places. A sharp judgment going to be to them in high places, man. The Lord is dealing with the leaders or ex-leaders of this world. Oh, he lived to 91. So what? The Lord still killed him. All right. We don't give a damn. Oh, he lived a good long life. So what? The Most High just still took that devil out. And for all that, his legacy is going to be mocked. Because you want you talking about you you ended the Cold War. We just read about eight precepts where the Cold War is still gonna get hot. Right. It's just on the time of the most high, that's all. Okay. Come on. For mercy will soon pardon the meanest. Meaning the lowest people on the earth, the Lord gonna have mercy on them, which has cost the nation of Israel. We the lowest of the low, man. You know the, the, the damn gentrification is getting so bad now, even when you got the money. Right. Even when the, the people start to tell these stories where Yo, I could afford it. The money's not a problem. They just said, we don't want your black ass here. Right. Nigga, your, nigga, your money ain't even good enough. That's like uh, Danny Glover not be, being able to get a cab. Right. That's like uh, 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 a Forrest Whitaker going into the store and damn, an East Indian chases him out and said, you stole something. A uh, 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 Forrest Whitaker said, I could buy this stuff. I can open up 10 chains in this store. I came in the store and I, I didn't see what I wanted, so I walked out real quick. Oh, you got something in your pocket. Black man came into still. Forrest Whitaker, like, man, I, I can get damn 10, 20 million easily for any movie. I can buy a chain of these damn supermarkets. But you still a nigga. Danny Glover, man, if I do another lethal weapon, I can get paid 50 million dollars for it. For another lethal weapon. But no, you're a nigga. You can't get a $9 cab from 34th Street to 23rd Street. Now you can't get a nine dollar cab, Negro, but you're a fifty million dollar man. So it don't matter. Because so the Lord said he's mercy is gonna partner meanness. It is to the point where you're the lowest people on the earth just because everybody hates your guts. Right? Listen, nigga, your money ain't even good enough. We don't even care if you can afford it. We just want to show your black ass you're not wanted. It's who you are, Negro, not your money. We don't give a damn. That's why they closed that store in Europe and wouldn't open it for Oprah Winfrey. Right. They said, we don't give a damn who you are. Right? We don't care who you are. You can have a multi-billion dollar conglomerate own network. Right. And you don't own a damn thing over here. You're just a nigga woman that want to spend money. That's a, a, a what's his name, Tory Lanez. Right? right? And, uh, basically humiliated the man in the store. The man gonna turn around and still spend thirty thousand dollars in the store. God. They said, "Nigga, we don't care about your money. You're still a nigger." Like um um like that movie Boomerang, where uh, the eater boy said that jacket is twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We don't carry. We don't, we don't we take land away. We, we don't carry. Cash. We don't carry cash in the store. Yeah, yeah. And Martin and uh, Eddie and the other brother, they were corporate brothers. They worked in a, they worked in an advertisement firm, but they are still a nigga. You know what I'm saying, nigga? You can't afford you can't afford uh, that jacket, and we don't carry no cash in the store, and we don't take layaway, right? So be what you got, Kate. For mercy will soon pardon the mean. We the lowest people on earth, man. Even even with billions of dollars, right? The reason why I say lowest because no matter what state you in, they still look at you the same way. They look at you with disgust. You're still a nigga. Right, come on. But mighty men, but mighty men, go ahead, shall be mighty tormented. But mighty men shall be mightily tormented. Come on. For he which is Lord over all, for he which is Lord. See, 
speak, the Lord, he said, uh, it says, mighty men shall be mightily tormented. Now, they said that uh, Gorbachev, when you read the article, he died of an unknown illness. Who to who say this man probably suffered? He might have suffered for years. They said he died of an unknown illness, right? We don't have to, really have to read it, but they said he died of an unknown illness. The man might have suffered for years. Because what the Lord said, mighty men shall be tormented. When they, when they uh, uh, basically took over the president of Sri Lanka's house, they said that man had to run for his life. They took over the man's house. They was in the man's pool, eating the man's food, chilling, having a pool party in the man's house. Yeah, man. They said, we got to starve. We coming to take over your prayer. Because the economy is so bad and we got to starve, we coming to take over your prayer. And that's coming here to America. It's coming here. Oh, yes, yeah, definitely coming here. You know, the brother Shemaya was breaking down how the inflation going cause the food uh, food prices to rise. Yeah. But see, I don't worry about that because the most I'm going to make a way. Right. He's still going to make a way. Even with, even with all the inflation they're talking about now, we still surviving. I go to the store, I'll be like, okay, that's what it costs. What the hell? Buddy, you mentioned that. Right? When they, when they break Right, go ahead. Free TJ Max stuff. Right, free TJ Max stuff. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen, man. People, listen, man. When you when you listen, when you take away the people's ability to survive, what you think they gonna do? What you think they gonna do? Well, what's that famous saying, Jake? Got yo, I gotta eat. What you think they gonna do when you take away their way to survive? Read, Jake. For he which is Lord over all shall fear no man's person. I said he don't fear no man's person. The Lord don't give a damn who you are. What position you in? Because he gave you that position. Right, come on. Neither shall he stand in awe of many of any man. What are you gonna stand in awe of any man? You think the most high gonna say, oh, that's uh uh Joe Biden. No, not him. That's uh Vlad that's Vladimir Putin, no, not him. That's uh that's the Rothschilds, the Illuminati. Right, that those are the highest men on the earth. That's the black popes from the Vatican. The Lord don't give a damn about none of that, man. In that day, he's gonna judge you, man. Read what you got, kid. Now shall he stand in awe of any man's greatness. The Lord said he's not going to stand in any man's greatness. Proverbs 21 and 1. Let's show you why the Lord don't stand in awe of any man's greatness. Read, King. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21 and verse 1. Yeah. The king's heart. The king's heart. Go ahead. Is in the hand of the Lord. Is in the hand of who? In, in the hand of, of the, the Lord. Lord. Is in the hands of the Lord. Come on. As the rivers of water. He turn it in whithersoever he will. The Lord said, as the rivers of water, he turns the king's heart whithersoever he will. So the Lord rules in the kingdom of man. God. The Lord don't give a damn who you are. He's the one that set you up. Oh. All right, come on. What's E's problem? What? Right? Right, yeah. Uh, repent and keep the commandments, E, and stop being a loud mouth. Shall Read. It. For he hath made the small and great and careth for all alike. The Lord said, For he hath made the small and great. He hath made the small and the great. Come on. And careth for all alike. Right. The Lord said he cares for all alike. Go ahead. But a sore trial shall come upon the mighty up unto you. Therefore, I, O kings, do I speak. That he may learn wisdom. The Lord said, look, unto you, O kings, do I speak that you may learn wisdom. And see, that's what the uh, Esau has turned the world into. Sodomites, man. Right? That's what he turned the world into. All right? Right? They, they look like the uh, um, the two men that was walking in the movie. Uh, what was the movie? Beverly um, Hills Cop? Beverly Hills Cop, yeah. yeah. Eddie, Eddie Murphy, Murphy yeah. <laughs> he walked right. by, he went, huh, huh. Right, he walked by, look, huh, because they were, they were wearing the leather suits he had on in, uh, in Raw, in, in Delirious. Yeah, you know, or Raw, one of them. All right, that, it was like a pun in a movie. It was like a pun in a movie. All right, go ahead. And not fall away, for they that keep holiness holy shall be judged holy. The Lord said, they shall, they that keep Holiness holy shall be judged holy. But and they that have learned such things shall find what to answer. Lord said, and they that have found and Salakia. And they that have learned such things shall find what to answer. That you shall find what to answer. Right? So the Lord is letting you know He's gonna punish the mighty men of the earth. 
It don't matter if you're a king, a leader, a president, an ex-president, the judgment of the Most High is coming upon you. Oh, God. I put that back over there. We're done with uh, Gorbachev for now. Shalaki. Mikhail, the man with the scar on his head. Famous for the damn scar on his head. Birthmark or whatever the hell it was. I, I forgot how he got that mark on his head. Uh, you just remembered uh, Oprah went to uh, Switzerland and she wasn't wearing her makeup. They didn't recognize her. <laughs> she went into the store. She wanted to buy a $38,000 bag and it was behind the case. The saleswoman says, nope, look at these bags over here. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, it was, it was two stories with Oprah, yeah, right? One, one, one story wasn't even let in the yeah, store. Another right. one is like, no, you can't afford this. I think that's kind of what happened with Tory Lanez. Yeah. They was kind of like treating him like he can't afford what was in the store. Right. And this dummy gonna go spend thirty thousand dollars in the store. Right. Like a damn idiot. They yeah. would have got thirty cents from me. They would have got three pennies from me. <laughs> Racist bastards. Right. And look, even like Dame Dash said, for all that, make your own brand. Make your own stuff. Come. 30, you think $30,000 you can't go out there and get your own clothes with your damn name engraved on it? You know what I'm saying? Look, I'm wearing my joints. I had this custom made. But you got to wear these other designers, man. God. All right? You got to wear, uh, 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 what's that line? Them, uh, them rappers from uh, uh, um, Buffalo. Um, Benny the Butcher and the other dude. He's like, my, my, my girl like Dior, so I might just go buy her the whole store. Why don't you go up state, nigga, and get that white supremacist that killed 10 people in Buffalo? Right. Right. Dumbass. You worried about running to them, uh, 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 Dior. Give me, um, uh, Romans 8 and 6. You worried about running to the Christian Dior store. Uh, my girl like it, so I might buy the whole store. And make Christian Dior even more money. You think it's as simple as hell, man. Why don't you go up state and worry about that white supremacist that shot them 10 people, brother? Right. Right, uh, and, and Benny the Butcher, he coming on on uh, 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 YouTube. Yo, uh, it's Freddie Gibbs, you so pushy, nigga. Nigga, you so pushy. Well, that's why we dragged you by your chain and all these ignorant, self-hating niggas, man. I can't stand them. I wish I could take these niggas one by one, throw them off the damn Empire State Building. After I cut them up, shoot them, and set them on fire. But who am I? They, they may repent. Right. As grimy and wicked and negative as they are, you right. know, they may repent. You know what I'm saying? I've been around that spirit. But then, yo, I, on the outside looking in, oh, that spirit is loathsome, man. I hate that damn spirit. These niggas, they exert extra energy to hate each other, man. You all on your nigga, you pushy. That's why we, we grabbed you by the train and just love to hate his brother. Oh, oh, see, uh, uh, we snatched this train off your bitch. You know what I'm saying? Oh, just negative, man. But you faggot lame niggas, because that's what you are. You ain't really about that life. You pick and choose your battles. You niggas ain't say nothing to that white supremacist or about it that shot up those people in that supermarket in Buffalo. But you tell uh, the other rapper brother, uh, Freddie Gibbs, whatever his name is, nigga, that's why we dragged you by your chain, nigga. You push you. That's why we snatched your girl chain, nigga. We snatched this off your bitch. And really, real niggas don't even really operate like that, man. Real niggas don't, you know, if there's such a term, because I don't even like to use that. What is a real nigga? But anyway, a real street dude a gangster, they really don't. Real dudes don't really get off on getting at your girl. That's sucker shit. Uh, excuse me. That's sucker ish, man. They don't really, you know, real dudes, a real street dude that's in that book. Most real dudes only put in work if they have to. A, a dudes ain't gonna really be bragging about getting at your girl. To real man, that's like, oh, that's sucker stuff. You gotta get at his girl. Or, or your children. I'm into some real street. They say, nigga, I'm grinding, I'll kill your whole family. Uh uh. A lot of times, real street dudes, they'll leave it at you. They're like, I ain't gonna do that to his family. I got beef with him. I'm gonna catch that nigga slip. But you bragging about snatching a chain off his girl's neck. What kind of whole ass stuff is that, man? This definition of gangsterism now is madness, man. Yeah, that's why we took this off your bitch neck. You know, see, you don't get no points for that, man. Start from 12. You niggas ain't, you niggas ain't no real, ain't, ain't no real men for that. I don't know if you, 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 you got the wrong definition of what's supposed to be a real nigga or gangster? Cause I don't even like to co-sign or none of that. Right. 
But from what I know of the streets, real dudes don't operate like that. Yeah, dudes it. ain't gonna brag about snatching yeah, a chain off the girl's it. neck. Yeah. Right, me what you got, Kay? Romans 8, 6. For to be carnally minded, nigga, a lot of you niggas are carnally minded, man. You're carnally minded, you're of the flesh, you're of material things, you're of self-hatred. You get off on hating your own people and hurting your own brother, bragging on social media about what you do to each other. Right, come on. It's death. It's what? It's, it's death. death. To be carnally minded is death. Go ahead. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Oh Lord say. But to be spiritually minded. To be spiritually minded, go ahead. Is life. Is life, go ahead. And, and peace. peace. Man, we want life and peace in your house shop. Right. It's, it's late in the game, man. It's 2022. It's time to repair the nation, man. Not run around on social media bragging about how you snap a dude you got beef with. You snatched the ch chain off his girl's neck. You, you Benny the Butcher, you, you niggas is, is rotten, man. Y'all need to repent, man. Why you, you ain't say nothing about the racial shooting up in Buffalo. All you doing is bragging about how you beat up your brother, robbed him, dragged his neck by his chain. Yeah, then, well, you don't get no brownie points for that. But that's the nigga of our nation. Come on. Because the carnal mind is enemy against God. The Lord said the carnal man mind is at strong opposition against God. Enmity means strong opposition. So when you have the carnal fleshly mind, then you're at enmity with God. The Lord don't deal. That spirit, that's not the spirit of the Lord. See, that's why when you come into the truth, you hate that kind of stuff. You hate that stuff, man. Because why? You get you you start to embody the spirit of the most high. And the things that he hates, you start to hate. So the carnal mind is enmity with the Lord. The chariot back? Huh? Chariot back. Is the chariot back? Wow. Or is that a satellite tonight? It's stationary. It might be a satellite. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe they playing with us. <laughs> All right, maybe it's uh, the chariot came back. I don't know. It might be. It might be. I saw it swoop up there. Right, the chariot might be back. You never know. The chariot is back. Is this going to be an every Wednesday night thing? <laughs> All praises. Right, God. <laughs> God, we're going to be out here in damn December, prophesying in the winter cold, and it's going to still. Is it going to show up every Wednesday? I don't know, you know. It wasn't there before. I don't it, know, it, right. turned and swooped up. For it is not subject to the law of God. See, the, the carnal mind is not subject to the law of the Most High. What does it mean when it's not subject to the law of the Most High? Meaning what? The carnal mind is not about keeping the commandments. So its enmity is an enemy to the Lord, man. That's why James said, if you will be a friend of this world, you are an enemy of the Most High. I'm like going there and just rap about killing your brother, Rap about, and it's, it's getting played out to say, yo, we're rapping about our reality. Because no, gangster rap has taken on its own genre now. That is entire, that's just a genre of music that Esau used to continue the self-hatred of our people. Right. And then, you know, back in the days you could have pulled that. Because you could have been like, we just trying to get in this industry, we telling our story, we telling the real of the hood. But now, they have created a whole negative genre for you to kill each other, destroy each other. God. For them lyrics to get in your mind, and, and you and you perform those lyrics. That drill music, son. Most I ain't dealing with that, man. That, most I is not dealing with that. So you better repent and come back to these laws, statutes, and commandments before it's too late. The time is winding down. America is going to be destroyed. Russia, China, the Middle East, the Arabs, all the different nations, European unions, is going to be a one world's war against the most high Christ of the angels and Israel against everybody. Us against the world. So it's time to repent, Israel, and stop playing games, man. Stop playing games. All you worried about is, oh man, Labor Day. Man, I gotta go, I gotta take my summer out with a bang, man. Labor Day, Juve, Eastern Parkway. Right? Parade. I damn near forgot about that parade this year, man. Yeah, I damn near forgot about it, man. Give me um, Syrac. Give me um, Ecclesiastes 26 and 5. Yeah, man, I damn near forgot about that damn parade, man. But every year, all you worry about is your folly. Your pure folly, man. Read that, King. Syrac 26 and 5. There be three things that my heart feareth. And for the fourth, I was so afraid. The slander of a city. The Lord said the slander of a city. Give me um. Uh, of First Timothy's four and one. Read the gathering together of an unruly multitude. What is that parade? A the gathering together of an unruly multitude. The Lord said that's the gathering together of an unruly multitude. 
Somebody gonna get shot at you, babe. Right. Or stabbed. Somebody gonna get shot. Uh, hell, uh, who was that year, man? The brother, the one brother, he got killed right on the parkway. Oh. You remember they had the brother on the front of the um, Daily News? Front of the Daily News with a damn bullet in his head. In the middle of the parkway. And that wasn't even Juve. Juve, you can kind of expect to get wild. That's at night. Right. Niggas is drinking. It's parties everywhere. It's Flatbush Crown Heights. You can expect that to get wild. But this nigga got body right off of a float. I think they said the dude shot him off of a float. Right. Shot down from a float. They had the man brain metal on the front of the damn Daily News. Well, yeah, it was disrespectful, man. Right, go ahead. I think they said it was a blood and crip robbery. Right. I think it has something to do with bloods and crips. I think the dude that got killed was blood. Right, but they shot the dude. They shot the dude down from off a float. Wow. They had the man's brain matter on the front of the damn Daily News. That was disrespectful, man. Right? Yeah, you know, and he had read on it. I think it was a blood crip thing, a gangbanger thing. Yeah, because I think the, I, I, from I remember the picture on the paper, the brother had read on. All right, go ahead. And a false accusation. And a what? And a false accusation. A false accusation. Come on. All these are worse than death. The Lord said, all these are worse than death. Huh? The Lord goes, at least death you at peace, man. Right. The Lord said all these are worse than death. A false accusation. That's all that parade is, man. Right. A gathering together of a damn unruly multitude. Right. All right, read what you got, King. Uh, Leah Badir. Leah Badir. First, this is First Timothy trying to give me a damn Guinness and a damn, a damn, uh, a jerk chicken, a ro uh -oh. right. no, a, um, a curry chicken roti, God damn it. Right. Right. Read what you got, Brent. Right. First Timothy chapter four verse one. Yeah, yeah. I like curry chicken roti. Really, God damn it! Read. <laughs> now the Spirit speaking expressly. Lord said the Spirit speaking expressly. Good. That in the latter time. Uh, let, no, uh, First Timothy's four and one. That's four and one. Yeah. All right. Give me. Um, I want the one where. Um, uh, get, try First Peter's. First Peter's four and one. All right. Yeah. Timothy Peter's. I always get them too confused. Right. All right, yeah, Liberty. You better be a rich speck. You be a uh, Jamaican rum 151. Get a stout. I ain't a kid. Carib. Right, Carib. Yeah, man. Right? Enough jerk chicken oxtail. Right? Chicken, yeah, man. Chicken roti. Chicken roti. Right, go ahead. <laughs> First Peter chapter 4, verse 1. Yeah. For as much. Then, yeah, that's it. Uh, First Peter's 4 and 1. Read, okay. For as much. Hey, you give me Ecclesiastes 10 and 5. Read. Uh. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Lord said, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Good. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men. Yeah, you don't live your life anymore to the lust of the flesh to men. Right. Shit, I ain't gonna front. I used to be out there at the parades. Right. Them damn Jamaican, Trini, Asian girls, man. Right. Oh. And it'd be shaking around when you go going to hell off out there. Right. Oh. Shaking behind them as you're just on the floor. Manny Wayne, Manny Wayne. Yeah, man, you just on the floor. Oh, yo, son, let me show you right there. Got your little, 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 little pretty Trini. And she, she turned around. Uh, you look halfway decent, all yeah, right, nigga, right, the guy. Right, right. You got the fresh cut, you got the new outfit on. You know what I'm saying? You start winding up for the little tree girl. <laughs> and then, let me get your number. Let me get your number real quick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got the Jamaican girl behind the throat, start dumping on her. All drunk and high, you know what I'm saying? Twisted out of your damn mind, or smoked like eight blunts, drunk like damn three cases of Heineken. Right. Yeah, man. We used to be out there. I ain't gonna fight. I used to be out there going to hell off. But what? The law said the time passed of your life. You know what I'm saying? So now, you know, the Trini Jamaican girl, babe, you gotta make a wife now. If anything, back then it was like, man, let me get that number so we can wind up. You know what I'm saying? Have me over, make me some damn oxtails, man, and you know what it is. You know what I'm saying, man? Yeah. yeah. Remember the uh, cops was whining on the ribs? Yeah, yeah. But we did a video on that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cops was out there. That yeah. was all, the man. Baseball cops. And, and a nigga better not have went to the St. Patrick's Day Parade if they Yeah, right. A right. nigga cop. Right. Like, them either mice would have had a problem. Right. They'd have been, this nigga's unprofessional. Right. This is what my tax dollars are going for? Right. For this guy to be, and he got a white woman at that. Right. 
They damn near would have lynched that black cop. Right. But yeah. the white cops, they wanted all up on them sisters and nothing happened. Also for the lynch with a lynch jet. And, and also the Patrick Lynch would have lynched the black man right. at the, the St. Patrick's Day parade. Right. Yeah. But the Eden White cop, the Eden White cop, he was all Eve was feeding it to him yeah, too. Yeah, and he was eating it up. That devil was eating it up. He wasn't a homo for that day. Right. Right. Like, that, that Benjamin Rich, she was feeding it to him. That devil was eating. He was on that ass. Right. And nobody, nobody, the other cops was cheering him on. Yeah. Everybody was cheering him on. Nobody, nobody said it was all in the news, all in the paper. Let that be a black cop at the St. Patrick's right. Day parade. Right. Hell emphatically no. Right. Niggas still would have been being lynched behind that. Right. Patrick Lynch would have been lynching Negroes. Right. They right. still, Jake still would have been paying for that. Right. Oh, yeah, it would have been, it would have been so many Jake shot and killed and and and, and officers suspended and, and and NYP black cops getting shot in the stings. Right. They would have never let that go, man. Right. Right. See that? So that 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 parade is just funny, man. Yeah. Somebody always getting killed. Right. One year, man, there was a Jake. I think they might have killed that brother on purpose. Remember that one year. It was a young Jake politician that was up and coming. Con, and he was I actually that. fighting against gun violence. Yeah. And he was fighting to help the community. And he, and he mysteriously, out of everybody at the damn parade, he gets killed. Con. Out of everybody. He got sniped. Yeah, I was out there that year. Like a sniper. Of, that was the year we was congregating on Nostra. We was trying to get to school from uh, Cahun's father. Yeah, yeah. And I was going over there to pay for the new moon. Because okay. the new moon was like the next couple of days. Right. So I said, I don't give a damn it's uh, uh, Labor Day. I'm going to go handle this business. Right. So I had to go over there. So while I'm walking down Nostra. I walked right through all that parade matters. Mm -hmm. I went kind of late because I said, maybe the parade would be done. But it was, it was on Labor Day. I went to give them the money to rent the spot for the new moon. Right. And it was all out there. I was out there that year. I think when I, after I left, he got killed. Right. Yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? So every year, some folly there, man. Right. It's some kind of folly. We don't, who's we? First Peters. First Peters 4 and 1 again from the top. Uh, First Peter chapter 4, verse 1. Yeah. For as much dead as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, yeah, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Arm yourself with the same mind. Go ahead. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, uh -huh. that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men. Right, so I can't, can't chase that Trinity girl behind that float right. no more. God, God. Can't, can't rub up on that Jamaican girl to some damn shabba rings. Right. Girls, girls every day. Cent, right, shabba. Right. 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 Uh, uh, we had shabba in D.C. Ham, Ham called himself shabba. Mr. Loverman. All right, yeah, Mr. Loverman, right? Go ahead. For, uh, but to the will of God. To the will of God. You can't do that no more. Now that Jamaican girl, you can dump on her, but she got to be your wife. Right. And that got to be in the privacy of your home. Right. right, come on. For the time past of our life. That time past of our life. That was that was 80s, early 90s for me, up right. until about 93, 94. Right. right, go ahead. May suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. The Lord said the time past of our life suffice us to wrought the will of the Gentiles. What's the old cliche saying? Been there, done that. Right. All right, come on. When we walk in lasciviousness. Yeah, that was that untamed lust, man, out right. there. That was lasciviousness. Right. He was out there, no more nanny wine, man. So All right. Like you. You no got, more Mr. Lover, man. You got these Jamaicans, they, they have the girls with their legs open. Right. Oh, yeah, what's that? The, the, the daggerin? The daggerin, yeah, daggerin, yeah. Yo, I don't know. Listen, when I went to the reggae parties, I, listen, in the 80s, late 80s, early 90s, we used to love the reggae parties. Right. Every, all of Judah was Benjamin. Right, right. Benjamin took over the damn city with parties back then. God. Judah was Benjamin back then. Right, God. You can tell us we wasn't damn Jamaican. Right. <laughs> but we went to go in there and wine on the grounds. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Judah's so, the new Benjamin. Judah was the new Benjamin, yeah. So, <laughs> 80s growing up East New York, Brooklyn, I talk about it a lot. We had rat holes. We used to call them the rat holes. Right. The, the It was the Jamaican basement parties. Right. And we used to have the hooky parties. Right. right. They used to throw hooky parties where you, um, you know, you cut school, they'll start the party like 10 in the morning, mm -hmm. and they'll end it like 5 or 6 in the evening before parents and stuff got home. Mm -hmm. Somebody, you know, a lot of them Benjamites was coming, moving into the city and buying up the houses. Right. So they would have their basements, and you pay you pay $2 for the hooky party, or a dollar, and you come and you wind up on girls, drink Heineken all day with a cut school, and get you a little dog. 
You know what I'm saying? I remember all that, man. But that time passed of our lives, man. All right? And the damn Judah was in who? Benjamin, man. Benjamin took over. The damn reggae parties, man. The rat holes, you know what I'm saying? Right? And back, my, my point being, back then you just, the most you did was you got a chick up in the corner and you wound up on it. And other things. And I'll leave that right there. You might have did other things, and uh, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, I know we used to go out to Flatbush to the clubs and different things, and it used to go down. Right there on the dance floor, it right. used to go down. You get your, and especially if you got a wall, right. and if you got a corner wall, it's a wrap. You know, so some niggas were so thirsty, they was trying to do it in the middle of the floor. Right. Nah, son, get a wall, son. Yeah. But if you got a chick and pinned up to the wall, or you got it in the corner, it was a wrap. Right. It used to be damn actual sex going on on the dance floor. Right. That was the that was the most. Nobody was diving down right. and breaking a ribs damn pel right. pelvis, oh, man. Oh. That dangerous stuff is yeah. off, man. <laughs> Daggerin, whatever the hell they call it, yeah. man. The most we did back then, 80s, 90s, you wound up on ribs and you might have. You might have, you might have. Dudes you used to tell a shorty, yo, you and all your girls wear short skirts. Oh. And. Going to wear one or where you know uh, what Jay Z said, slip the panties right to the side. Ain't got the time to take drawers off. Right. You slip them. That, that, I'm, I'm just being real. Right. So like it. That's what was going on in the parties. Right. You you told you if you had a shorty, everybody club you had your shorty. Yo, wear a short skirt. You know what it is. It was almost like you got off on it. Right. Like yo, you know to. Right. To dance and have sex with right. a chick up on the wall. Yeah, yeah. It was like, yo, son, I was getting it in, yeah, son. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's right there in the club, right there on the dance floor, because the, the party would be packed like this. Right. And you could you get a chick up on the wall, it was going down. I say all that to say, that's the most that went on. Yeah. Nobody was leaping right. from them <laughs> six stories <laughs> up <laughs> and banging into a rim's <laughs> vagina. <laughs> then that danger in is off. Man. That, damn, that's that was the most that was going on for the 80s and 90s. It's damn near spiritual power that they yeah. could do that and not kill the devil. Yeah, and, and that's the crazy <laughs> thing. Most of them daggering videos I've seen, yeah. the rib don't even get hurt. Yeah, she uh, popped back like, up. How do they do that? Right. Yeah, and, and it's the crazy thing. Right. There's, there's, we so talented, we got a method to madness. Right. Uh, Benjamin has an art and a skill <laughs> where they do that right. and don't hurt the rib right. and, and don't hurt themselves. <laughs> and the man, the man will just jump up and, and pull the rib up and start whining on Oh my God. I see Benjamin The throw. man will bang her damn pelvis and then he'll grab yeah. her and jump up and grab her onto him and walk up for her. I see Benjamin. <laughs> Put a rib up in the tree like this. Uh, yeah. Climb up, up in the tree. Oh my goodness, yo. <laughs> yo, and listen, 90% of the videos I saw, right. nobody gets hurt. Right, nobody gets hurt. I'm like, damn, Benjamin has. It's Israel is so talented, the they will turn power. madness. <laughs> I got Benjamin, the man got away, he jumped right. down <laughs> and he knows how to land the technique. With, and not hurt himself on a rim, but still bang her vagina. They have a technique. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm telling you, man. That's what we gotta be the salt of the earth, Fox. Because I mean, don't, I mean, I heard stories where people got hurt, but most of the time I see videos and stuff, I'm like, yeah. damn, Israel is, we talented in our madness, bro. Right. Oh, I oh. said, the man just, just, Dagger did the daggering on the rib, and him and the rib not hurt. Right, they good. Right, <laughs> it gives you answer, chapter 10, verse Oh, no, finish out first Peter. So I can finish out first Peter's read. First Peter, chapter 4, verse 3. Yes. For the time passed of our life. For that time passed of our life. When you repent and come in your house, shall that time passed. God, the last time, man, the last time I went, last time I went to Eastern Park, we was trying to make some money. Right. You know what I'm saying? We was out there selling beers and stuff, man. I was I was with the school by that time. Right. And that's when, you know, it was it was a less uh there was a little bit of lenient in the city. Right. You can go out there and sell, cut the case of the beer, sell water, you need no vendor's license or nothing, you just go out there and get your money. That was the last time I was there. Good. May suffice us to have worked the will of the Gentiles. Except for the time I passed through when I was going to Notion, but I was just passing through. Go ahead. When we walk in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine. Excess of wine, man. That's what you go out there for. You get drunk. If you're drinking beer, you drink about 20 Heinekens. Right. If you're drinking liquor, you take a couple of shots of 
151 or some kind of Jamaican or Caribbean rum. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was 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 Caribbean that day. You know what I'm saying? Yo, what you drinking, man? Yo, I'm drinking that Jamaican. Yo, I'm twisted, son, that 151, son. Yo, that you have one of the strong, son. Twisted, son. Go ahead, go ahead. Revelings. Banquets. What did I say? Uh, Revelings. Revelings is, is Eastern Parkway, a wild party. All right, go ahead. Banquet and banquetings. They got all kinds of food out there. You get any kind of food. Roti, patsy, everything out there. Everything. Go ahead. And abominable idolatry. And abominable idolatries because um, I was reading some history years ago where that whole concept of the Labor Day Parade, it goes back to the ancient Egyptian festivals. They said how these festivals and marches and parades in ancient Egypt, where they would make effigies of their gods and worship, and that's what the floats represent. They would make effigies of these their Egyptian gods, and they would have parades and worship their gods and have... Uh, and you know the Egyptians were sexual deviants, man. Right. So they would have all kinds of orgies and wild. All that concept goes back to the um, everything. Everything goes back to Egypt or Babylon. Right. All right, and then and then eventually Rome, Greece, because they adapted the customs. But all that, you know, they say, uh, you know, Labor Day is supposed to be the uh, uh, celebration of the working man. All right, but they get out there and wild out and and and. You know, they say some of the uh, some of it got history from the um, the carnivals and Trini and stuff like that. Right. But when you uh, read go deeper, a lot of them festivals and stuff they had in the ancient time and it just got mimicked over the years. Yeah, that's all, man. Father, your second great dignity, and that's not that's not um that's not of the Most High. No. You know what I'm saying? What, what scriptures say? Celebrate the working man. Right. We got the Sabbath when the Lord said, "Rest from all your labors once a week," but He didn't say labor. Lord, Passover, we got free from slavery. Right, we got, got Passover. Right, we got free from slavery. We got yeah. free from hard bondage of the right. Egyptians. Right. right, what more labor that you want to celebrate? Right. Right. right, but you go by this society and what they give you, man. You know, but our people don't know. We, you know, give me a uh, drop everything. Give me a uh, hold up. Finish out. Finish it up, Peter. So like, huh? This you first read? I'm in verse. This is uh, verse up to verse four now. First Peter chapter four and verse four. Four and four. four. Right, good. Where in? You can't make this up. Benjamin's four right, four. we're talking about Benjamin, right? Good. <laughs> four and four. Go ahead. Where in? They think it's strange. They think it's strange. Go ahead. That ye run not with them to the same excessive right. Yeah, man. You have no interest in doing that no more. Right. So now your homies, your family, people you grew up with, yo, nigga, what? You ain't coming this year? You Especially are. when you're new to the truth. <laughs> right. Especially when you're new to the truth. See, they don't know we can go in Prospect Park and have a cookout in righteousness, lawful, and, you know, keep everything in order. But we don't want to go out there. You can still have fun in the truth, but you don't want to go out there and be involved in that, that wild revel. Right. All right, go ahead. Speaking evil of you. Yeah, he done joined the cult. He done lost his mind. Something wrong with him. They're going to speak it. The reason why they say they speak evil of you because... You're doing the right thing, but they're speaking about you in a negative way. Right, right. Oh, she, you know, she's crazy, you know. Uh, look at that, look at that, look at that guy she's with now. He wear all those funny clothes like a superhero or something. Right. What's wrong with them? Right. She got on all them long dresses and skirts now and all covered up. Like, you all old looking now? But if you was doing that as a Muslim, they would say, you know, she's a Muslim. Leave her alone. That's her religion. If you was doing that as a Christian, or you know, you know the Christian women, they believe in dressing modest, but now you're doing it for the truth. So that's why them demons come, they speak right. evil of you. Right. And the reason why Peter said they speak evil of you, because if you're not strong, they'll make you think you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. That's why I said they speak evil of you, because they make it seem like you're doing something evil. Right. They speak so bad about you, you know, weak people start second guessing the truth. Right. Damn, I ain't, you know, that's why I tell you, when you read the parable of the sower, it says, when tribulation came for the word's sake, they was offended and they fell by the wayside. Right. Meaning they didn't, you didn't think, damn, I didn't think my friends and family would come at me like this for coming into the truth. Right. So now that's the level, that's the level of endurance that a lot of people can't take. Right. That's why. And they've been asked, well, what happened to this brother? What happened to the sister? They was weak. Right. You know, we pray for them and we hope the Spirit restored them, but, you know, we didn't do nothing to them. H.O., I didn't do nothing to them. Oh, he left the camp, she left. They was weak. We didn't do nothing to them. They just couldn't tell. They couldn't deal with it. Right. The pressure came down and they caved in. You know what I'm saying? They caved in. So that's why I said they speak evil of you because they're damn near have you thinking you're doing something wrong. 
Right. All right, come on. Verse 5. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? So Yahweh Shah is coming through the power of the most high to judge the living and the dead. We don't give a damn what man say or think. We got to give an account to Yahweh right. by Shema Mashiach. Right. So you can speak evil against us all you got there want. We got to give account to the most high Yahweh Shah. All right, give me Titus 2 and 1. Yeah, Titus chapter 2 and verse 1. Yeah, man, we got engaged in this body. We don't give a damn about your holiday weekend. What are we going to be doing for your holiday weekend? Teach him the gospel, if it be the most high. If he say the same. Brothers will be out here Friday, 34th Saturday. Most high will. I'll be in Detroit. I'll be in the D. Friday, Saturday, doing the work of your holiday by Shema Mashiach. We're going to be doing the work. Right? Don't give a damn about your holiday weekend, man. Right? If anything, if you're in the spirit, you just happen to have a day off. Right? You're over the plantation. Right. All right, read, King. Titus 2 and 1. Bring it speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Speak the things that become sound doctrine. Go on. That the aged men. Aged men. Go ahead. Be sober. Be what? Be sober. The aged men got to be sober. Come on. Brave. Brave. Go ahead. Temperate. Go on. Sound in faith. Go ahead. In charity. In patience. Go ahead. The aged women, likewise. That they be in behavior as becoming holiness. Come on. Not false accusers. Not giving so much wine. Teachers of good things. Blood. Teachers of good things. Uh, uh, try three and one. Uh, Titus three and one. Jump over to three and one. Read. Titus three and one. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers. To obey magistrates. To be ready to every good work. To speak evil of no man. So these are the things, these are the attributes that uh, a follower of Yahweh Shah, Paul was saying through Titus that you have to have. Come on. To speak evil of no man. Yeah, to the best of your ability, speak evil of no man. Right, go ahead. To be no brawler. To be no brawler. All right, threatening brothers and what you going to do and try to get carnal with brothers. All right, that's another spirit running around Israel. Everybody's a tough guy when they come in the truth. Right. Knowing damn well you wasn't that dude in the world. And if you were that dude, you're supposed to be... Listen, man, I always say it. I meet brothers in the truth that come from all kinds of backgrounds. Because brothers have confided in me. A brother might be a stone-cold killer. Might have been, been. A stone-cold killer. That man is as humble as pie now. You would never even think that brother was like that. Because he repented and came in your house shop. He's not on a video threatening a brother. You will sit on a video wanting to get caught over a brother. Calling a brother out of his name. See that you see that's supposed to be no problem, man. He's supposed to come in this man. The scripture said, be wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. You're supposed to be ashamed of those things you did. If you took a life, damn, that's another Israelite I took out, man. I mean, you in the midst of the beef in the street or whatever, you might have had to do what you had to do. Because remember, the scriptures say we gonna come from all walks of life. The most I gonna lie, he going, you can't judge nobody. Brother might have been a downright, he might have been a hit man for a drug crew. All right, and the most high get he the most high let him repent. He might have been an extortioner, he might have been a pimp, pimping his own black and Latino women, whatever. He might have been uh, uh bullying dudes around the way, that Debo spirit. Right. Coming around, just beat niggas up and rob them. Everybody's scared of you because you big. Until one day the little dude get a get a gun and blow your brains out. I seen a lot of that happen in the hood. A lot of bullies got killed. Right. right? But either way, you're not supposed to judge nobody for their past lifestyle. But I see brothers from come from all walks of life. They don't have to tell me the stuff that they, they could have just said, I repent, I'll keep that between me and the most high. But brothers get comfortable and we've talked. And I didn't judge no brother for any kind of the lowest, dirtiest thing a brother confessed to me that he did. Right. Maybe the brother just wanted to get off his chest. But, but them, them brothers be gentle, man. Be more, some of the most humble brothers. And you don't know what that brother background is. But now you come in Israel, you the toughest nigga on the block. Calling everybody out their name. And a lot of times, a lot of brothers in the truth get away with that because nobody's seen they ass yet. Right. Because brothers are in the spirit. The brothers don't want to go there with you. And who wants to be locked up 25 in life? I killed a fellow Israelite brother. Right. Number one, you know how bad that's going to make the nation look? Once people get a hold of that, oh, see, look at them Israelites, man. Them niggas doing drive-bys on each other. Look at them niggas, man. Them niggas ain't no different. So you don't want to go. They're about to be coming out their mouth, reckless, talking, and they're thinking you scared of them, and all kinds of stuff. Right. No, and listen, nigga, if doing it is not the problem. It's the after effect. Right. And then, like, 
I got to have that conscience with the most high now. Damn, you took out a fellow brother that know he's an Israelite. All because a nigga running his damn mouth reckless and don't think it, don't, he think it's sweet, but you're trying to stay in the spirit. So now you soft, so they're going to keep pushing. Like, like in the street, you don't do nothing, so they're going to keep pushing at you. Right? right? But leave it in the hands of the most high. Go ahead. But gentle. But what? But oh, gentle. gentle. You're not supposed to be a brawler. You're supposed to be gentle. Right? Come on. Showing all meekness. What do I say? Showing all meekness. But that's another thing. Right. Brothers will take your meekness for weakness. Right. But the scripture tell you to show meekness. Right. So now when you humble, you soft. Right. right? But the scriptures tell you to be meek and humble. Right. All right? Come on. Unto all men. Right. But then if you flip, now you carnal. Right. Now you're not in the spirit. You off. Right? Go ahead. You, you can't win. Right. You can't win for losing. Right? Go ahead. For we ourselves also, a lot of brothers are in the nation like that because nobody has dealt with them yet. So they keep they keep going on and on because they haven't been stopped. But the most I'm going to stop them. That's all right. We're going to stay in the spirit. We're going to stay calm. Unless you got to go there, which we don't. I don't wish to hurt no Israelite, man. Not even in the world, man. I want my people to repent. You know, we know we say what we say about Jake, but if Jake repents, they have tomorrow. You know, the most grimiest Jake that we hate. Now, why got brothers that would be so self-hating? They can repent today or tomorrow. We got to love them like we standing here with each other. So we don't want to, I don't want to see nothing happen to none of my people. No brawl in the scriptures say. You got to be meek. No, nah, brother, that's okay. Right, go ahead. For we ourselves also were some towns from that. What that dude, um, that dude, um, blue, blue something. Blue face. Blue face. Yeah, yeah. He said, this dude ain't even know, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? I done killed people. Right. I, done, I, done, I done cut two uh, bodies in jail. Right. I could have just took his life right then and there. But I don't want to go back to jail. Right. Right. So you think, because you think you played him while he's in the game. You won it. Right. You have no idea. You just could have lost your life. But that man don't want to go back to jail. Right. So Jake think it's sweet because you don't do nothing because you're not trying to go there. Right. All right? He said, this guy I don't know, man. I caught a body in jail. I, I choked dudes with my bare hands. Right. But I just walked away. I did 39 years. I don't want to go back to jail. But that man, you just, you just, you think. And most of the time, most of the time, the dudes that be starting stuff is the ones that ain't even really about that. Right, right. You have no idea. You just ran across a cold stone killer. And a man gave you a pass. Right. But Israel want to come in the truth and be tough guys now. Because they know brothers are in your house shot. And they know a brother going to think before he react like he would have in the street. Right, so come on, Israel, let's get rid of that spirit. You're not impressing nobody. Nobody care how tough you thinking you are. They don't care how reckless you could talk about another brother. You're not proving nothing. To me. This un is counterproductive. It's not doing nothing for the nation. It's not building the nation up. You sound like an old grumpy nigga, actually, when you talk like that. Right, right come on. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. What did I say? For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. You were also foolish. Come on. Disobedient. To see the, the point being, we were like that also, so we got to be merciful. Right. All right, but when you come into the truth, you're supposed to cut all that old man off. Right. It don't make you any less of a man. It don't make you soft or weak. You're actually stronger because you know how to contain your spirit. The Lord said what, man? Um, um, a man that can't rule over his old spirit is like a city with no bars, man. Right. You got no self-control. You're supposed to be able to control your spirit, your temper. You're supposed to let things go. You're supposed to let stuff roll off of you. You're really only supposed to be doing something if you had no choice. It was life or death. You had to defend yourself. You had to protect your family, your women, your children. Somebody tried to hurt a brother. Look, I'll take that bullet for the brother. Or I'm, I'm going I'm to defend. I'm not going to let that person hurt my brother. I'm going to get at them. That's the only case, man. You're not supposed to be on damn Instagram threatening to fight a brother because y'all disagree about the scripture. Come on, man. Knock it off, man. Be king. For we ourselves also, this is the classic one. Brothers hate your guts. And they, they try to use any little thing. They try to use any little thing that they hear about you as a reason to go against you. When they hated you already. So a lot of times it ain't got nothing to do with them. They just, ah, oh, I hurt. Yeah, yeah, see, they're going to get Because they hated your guts in the first place. Anything anybody say about you, they're going to agree with them and be against you because they hate you anyway. Nigga, you ain't even got nothing to do with this. But now that's a reason to threaten a brother because you hate him already. Right? Come on. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, yeah. disobedient, deceived. The Lord said we ourselves sometimes were disobedient, foolish, deceived. Yeah. Serving divers' lust. Serving divers' lust. Come on. And pleasure. Now you're supposed to put all that away, man. Yeah. 
You're supposed to become a new man and woman in your house shop. But Paul just said you're supposed to be meek, man. My God, living in malice and envy. We was living in malice and envy. That's the old worldly man. You're supposed to come into the knowledge and see every brother's gift. You know what? Yeah, how I gave him this gift? Most I gave him this gift. Most I gave, you know what? Let's form like Voltron, put all them gifts together and build this nation. Right. All right, come on. Hateful. What do I say? Hateful. Hateful. You know what I'm saying? My, my famous uh, summer quote. I hate your guts and I hope that you die. Right? <laughs> Sticky fingers, my name and my life is a lie. Right? Yeah, man. I hate your guts and I hope that you die. I'm having a bad day, so stay Right, I'm a bad day so you stay out of my way. Right, good. Yeah. Hate right. Pistol packing nigga, right. so you better obey. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Obey the most high. Obey the most high, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, you only a pistol packing nigga to another nigga. Stop. Right, right go sit your ass down somewhere. Right. Esau, come, you'll drop the gun and run and, and pee on yourself. Right, go ahead. And hating one another. And what? And hating one another. Yeah, notice, notice what Titus said. He said. Hateful and hating one another, right? Because it is what got that hate. So you could, you could, you could, uh, like I tell you in um, Proverbs, there's a generation whose teeth are like knives, brother. Speak damn evil against you, maliciousness. You could tell a brother just hate your guts, right? Like, come on, but after that, the kindness and love of God. But now, the kindness and the love of Yahweh Shai, come on. Of our God, Yahweh, Savior, towards man and praise, not by works of righteousness, not by the works of righteousness, come on, which we have done, but according to his mercy, uh, what? But according to his mercy, according to his mercy, come on, he saved us, saved us, man. So now, after that, you when you put away the malice and the hatred and the envy, you're supposed to have the love and the right. compassion and the brotherhood. Oh. That'll make you weak, it'll make you soft, and make you a man of the Lord. That's it. That's how we were in the beginning. That's what the scriptures say. Um, you were tender and delicate. That's what Paul is saying. Go back to those people you were in Deuteronomy 28. Before the most I put the curse on you. You were tender and delicate towards one another. But now, oh, everybody got to prove something. This generation got to prove something. Just because I'm an Israelite of the truth, niggas ain't going to think I'm soft. Come on, man. That's so goofy and corny and played out. Go get a Bible, brother, and repent and get your mind right. Bring it out, Jay. That conditioning, that, that spirit, the most I manifest that spirit from the curse, conditioning <coughs> from centuries ago on a slave plantation. That's why they would sell brothers off. And when they, when they would come, when they would come, it's a lot, it's a lot. My God, I'm upset. Because um, give me the classic. Give me um, drop it, drop that. That was Titus, right? Drop that. Give me Isaiah three and one. And give me the classic in Deuteronomy. It's fun. I was watching a, a, a documentary on games from the sixties, right. and they would say they were just basically saying the same thing. Right. Yo, we fight over territory mm -hmm. and to protect our. See, those are the guys from Seventy Ninth Street, uh, and we from over here on Eighty Third Street. Right. It was just just because I don't know you, right. we got beef. Right. Right. But you another black man like me. Right. I've been, I've been, uh, uh, you know, coming up in the hood, I've been in different scenarios where I would walk up on a block because I was kind of bug when I was young. It's not that I was the toughest guy, but I had that Larry Fishburn spirit. Yo, how are we going to be afraid of our own people? So I would kind of just go anywhere, you know what I'm saying? Until dudes like OGs and stuff start telling me, yo, you got to be careful. 
because niggas would just get at you just for passing through. Right. You know, but I'd be like, I'm all naive, like, niggas over there like me, I'll go whatever, you know what I'm saying? Especially if there's a girl or something involved. Man, I'm going to see her, I don't care what niggas over there, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, you know, going through different hoods, growing up, and you would just see it, niggas would just look at you, right. they don't know you, you're not from over here, yo, who this nigga? And you just walking through my nigga right. business. Right. But see, me think the most high, like, if, if I was in my neighborhood, I always knew somebody. Right. So somebody in the crowd would be like, oh, that son, I know him. You know, so that's my man. Right. I'd be like 30 niggas just staring right. at God, you. God. And like, all I'm doing is walking. Right. Right. I knew that from even being in the world. Right. All I'm doing is walking down the street. But because you don't recognize me as another black man, right. it's automatic beef. Right. But thank the most high, somebody in the crowd would be like, oh, no, that's my man. Yo, I know that nigga. Yo, what up? What you doing over here? And then dudes would be like, yo, be careful coming. Like, yo, if I wasn't out here, these niggas probably would have stuck to you. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I can't thank the most high. I kind of always knew somebody. Right. Somebody out of them 30, 40 niggas I know. Or somebody recognized my face. Yo, son, did, they, did we want to have a party together somewhere? You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, even then, like, why am I the enemy just because you don't know me? Right. But that's the crazy, but like you said, it go back to the plantation. Yeah. And I was watching a gang banging documentary, mm -hmm. and it was like, yo, them niggas from 62nd, we from 64th. Right. And we were like, you know, it's, it's about neighborhood, man, right. territory, man. You ain't from over here. Right. This shit is crazy, man. You do? And it go back to slavery. Yeah, because Who's that see, nigga on, on that, that man? Night. But see, now remember, Salakia, yeah. remember, that's how you know it's against the scripture. Right. Because the scriptures tell you, how to treat like a right. stranger. Right. Right. If you don't know the brother, you still supposed to treat him like one old boy. Right. That's how you know that curse is on. Yeah. Bring it out. And see, that's how the gangs kind of was, because yeah. it was kind of like you coming into my territory. Right. You trying to take what I got over here, exactly. which nigga, you don't have nothing. Right. The white man owns all taking that. My grits. You taking, you coming in my neighborhood. Right. You, 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 you trying to talk to my girls. Mm -hmm. You coming around. You might be wanting to take over my little drugs I got. Right. So it was like, yo, this strange nigga is yeah. coming to take what I got. Right. Right. Give me um, Isaiah three and one. Read. Isaiah three and one. Right. For behold, the Lord. The Lord of hosts do it take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff. That our land and our strength was taken away from us. All right, come on. The whole state of bread and the whole state of water. And they took away the wisdom from us. Mm -hmm. So now you don't have no wisdom on how to deal with a stranger of your own nation. You're supposed to just treat him like a brother also. Right. All right, come on. The mighty man. And the man of war, the judge and the prophet, and the prudent and the ancient, the captain of fifty, and the honorable men, and the counselors, and the cunning art of artificer, and the eloquent orator. Eloquent orator, men that knew how to speak. Right, so now, hold your shot. All right, my God off the set. All right, yeah, so the Lord said he took all that away. So now what? You don't know how to treat each other. You don't have you don't have no land. You don't have no resources. So now you're fighting over the little crumbs. So that's why you feel threatened when a brother you don't know come around. This nigga trying to come take what I got. This nigga trying to come and be in my neighborhood. He think you gonna run my hood? But it, it, and when you really look at the logic, there is no logic. Right. It's the it's the most ignorant thing in the world. That's why I said. That's why I kind of used to have that mentality. They're not going wherever I want. Those are black people like me. Right. You know, I, I had to get, you know, the, the street game was like, yo, son, you got to be careful going certain places, dude. Especially if you don't know dudes. But I, I kind of had the mentality like, those are niggas like me. Right. What am I scared of them for? Mm -hmm. Or why I got to be an enemy just because they don't know me? I'm black people like me. Right. I was a little naive, but what the hell, you know what I'm saying? Or maybe I had the right spirit, but at the wrong time. You know, but it was like that Larry Fishburne spirit in Boys in the Hood. It's the 90s, man. It's the time for us to stop being scared of our own people. You know, they was like, man, you got us out here caught and furious, man, man. What's going on? He's like, man, look, this is our people, man. 
You know what I'm saying? Paul Mooney makes a joke about that. He said, yeah. uh, you lock niggas in the room, they come, they come out with cases. Right. And you lock a bunch of niggas, a bunch of white people in the room, they come out with uh, plans for a theme park. Right, come, come, come. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, so many times, man. You walk in a room full of jakes, right. you barely get up a suck. Right, right. It's tension, niggas looking. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, damn, man. Like, it, it, there's so much hatred, you can't even just say, what's up, brothers, how y'all doing? Right. And get a response. Right. You know what I'm saying? You might get one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I don't know this nigga. I, I'll, know, tr man, I'll not, trust man. him. I don't trust him. I don't trust him. You know, you know this nigga? This nigga from, man. You ain't from around here. You yeah. know? You look right. shifty. Yeah, man. Just self hatred, <laughs> man. Self hatred, but it's all due to the curse. Right. And like you said, it goes back to slavery, mm -hmm. man. Goes back to slavery, man. Willie Lynch. Right, Willie Lynch. You know what I'm saying? But now it's time for us to heal our people. Oh. The ones that want to be healed, the ones that don't want to be healed, they're going to stay here with Babylon and perish with Babylon. Give me uh, Matthews 10 and 5 to close out on. All right, we'll close out on that. Matthews 10 and 5. All right, Matthews chapter 10, verse 5. Read that, King. Matthews 10 and 5. Yeah. He spoke, Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans, into ye not. Come on. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go to, rather to the lost sheep. Come on. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yeah. And as ye go. And as ye go. Yeah. Go, preach. Saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Listen, when you go to Israel, preach to Israel and tell them the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Wow. That's our job, man. That's that's now what we're supposed to be doing to heal the nation. All right. Go ahead. Heal the sick. The Lord said heal the sick. Come on. Cleanse the leper. Cleanse the leper, like if the Lord give us spiritual power. God, raise the dead. Raise up the dead. Come on. Cast out devils. Good. Freely he have received, freely give. See that? The Lord said, freely you have received, freely give. All right, so that's our job now. Our job is to come out and preach and tell Israel the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's our right. time as a people. Right. right, we gotta we gotta be like damn McFadden and Whitehead. Right. Ain't no stopping us now. Right. We're leaving the negative people way behind. Right. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's time to come on up out of this, man. You know, we still here and got to suffer the curses to a degree, but at least it's time to get your mind right, man. Right. And if you don't want to get your mind right, the Lord's going to leave you here, man. He's going to just leave you here. So that's all, man. We're just waiting for that 144,000 to rise up and that one third, and it's a wrap. Right. It's a wrap, man. You know what I'm saying? We waiting for the kingdom of the Lord to come. And that's it, man. You know what, that? Stay here and die with Babylon. Oh. Burn with Babylon, baby, burn. Oh. All right, so that's about it. We're going to close out on that. All right, got to get ready to get on this plane tomorrow. All right, go out to it's my so friend. It's so cold in the deep. Yeah, all right, it's so cold in the deep at the end of the summer. Right. <laughs> but uh, go out to cold the Detroit. Heart. Right, cool hearted. Right. Go out and show some love to the Detroit family. All praise to you. How about you, Mashiach? Yo, Shad. Hello, y'all. Hello, y'all. Hello, y'all. Hello, y'all. Hashem. Hamashiach. 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 Hello, y'all. Shalom. Shalom. So, with that, death and destruction to Esau and the other nations, power, peace, safety, and the kingdom of heaven to the 12 tribes of Israel forever and ever. Amen. Kwame Ashala, we still got next. HOI to the chariots fly. Don't scream it if you don't mean it. All the camps in Yahweh and Yahweh shine that are sincere throughout the four corners of the earth. HOI pull up, boys. Bring it out. All praise to Yahweh and Yahweh shine forever and ever. Amen. Priest of Box signing off. New York camp, last day of August. Black August, the word goes out with fire and brimstone them. All praise to Yahweh and Yahweh shine forever and ever. Amen. Shalom. Shalom. Bom dia, Shalom. Okay. Oh, damn, this charge is still working? Shalom, Israel, all praise to you. How about Shema Shiach Yahushai? Hope y'all got edified tonight. If you learn one thing, we've done our job. All praise to you. How about Yahushai forever and ever? Amen. Kwame Yahushai, we still got next. Hallelujah. Bring it out. H-O-I pull up boys, H-O-I to the chariots fly, don't scream it if you don't mean it. Once again, hope y'all enjoyed camp tonight, on, live from downtown Brooklyn, New York City. Once again, if we learn one thing tonight, we've done our job. All praise to Yahweh and Yahweh shy forever and ever our mind. Kwame Shabbat.
Shalom.